Hi guys! Welcome sa Engine Nerd Math Channel. Sa video na to ay ituturo ko sa inyo ang source free RL circuit. So kung gusto niyo itong matutunan, just keep on watching. Okay, so meron akong naunang video about the source free RC circuit. Kung saan, dinerive natin yung voltage response doon sa source free RC circuit which is wala siyang independent current or voltage source. So yung natural response lang niya ay base doon sa stored energy na sinupply doon sa initially charged na kapasitor. So this time ay tuturo ko naman sa inyo ang source free RL circuit. So para ho lang to doon sa source free RC circuit It's just that this time, kapag kinonsider natin yung resistor tsaka inductor, consider natin yung initial current doon sa inductor. So given this source-free RL circuit, we can find the KVL equation around this loop. So we have summation of voltage is equal to zero. So we have VL plus VR is equal to zero. And then... We know dun sa video ko about uh, the voltage across the inductor is equal to VL is equal to LDI over DT, right? So we have LDI over DT plus etong VR is equal siya sa, using Ohm's law, I times R is equal to 0. Okay, so pwede natin i-divide both sides of the equation by L para maging form niya ay DI over DT plus R over L I is equal to zero. By the way, kung i-define natin na yung initial current dito sa inductor or yung I of zero natin dito sa inductor ay equal sa I naught, pwede natin magamit ito mamaya kapag sinolve natin yung current response doon sa inductor. So, using this equation, differential equation, which is a separable one, uh, we can transpose R over Li dito sa kabila sa so magiging Di over DT is equal to negative R over Li and then pwede natin i-cross multiply itong DT sa taas tapos itong I sa baba. So parang Di over I is equal to negative R over L DT. Integrate natin both sides of the equation. We have integral ng Di over I is simply ln I equals integral ng negative r over l dt ay simply negative r over lt and then plus c. Again, itong c ay solve natin using the initial condition na at t is equal to 0, i of 0 is equal to i naught. So we have ln of i naught is equal to negative r over l at t is equal to 0 plus c. So therefore, we have eto ay 0, C is equal to ln of I naught. So therefore, we have the final form of the equation, ln I is equal to negative R over LT plus ln I naught. So transpose natin itong positive ln I naught sa kabila, so parang ln I minus ln I naught is equal to negative R over LT, or simply ln, ito apply natin yung quotient rule for logarithm. So, we have ln i over i naught is equal to negative r over lt. And then, gawin natin exponent to with base e both sides. So, mga cancel tong ln magiging i over i naught is equal to e raised to negative r over lt. So, therefore, i is equal to i naught e raised to negative r over lt or i of t. So, therefore, Mapapansin uli natin na itong current response nung RL circuit natin ay exponential decay nung initial current I naught natin. Tapos, meron din tayong tinatawag dito na time constant or tau. So, yung tau natin dito, this time ay yung L over R. So, kung isubstitute natin itong tau na L over R, magiging I of T natin is I naught e raised to negative T over tau. Okay? So, itong time constant din natin na tau, siya yung magde-determine kung gaano kabilis mag-decay yung initial current natin. So, halimbawa, 
initially, ito yung current natin, which nagsisimula sa I0, and then, as T increases infinitely, o yung term natin ay nag increase infinitely, therefore, yung graph natin, o yung response ng RL circuit natin, ay lumiliit din, approaching zero. So, when it reaches its time constant na tau, yung equivalent current natin ay 36.8% na lang nung initial current na I0 or 0.368 I0. Okay, so ganun din kapag na-reach natin yung 5 time constant, yung current response natin ay approximately 0 na or napakababa na. Okay? Now, base din sa time constant natin, habang mababa yung time constant natin, ay mabilis din yung pag-decay ng current natin Habang kapag tumataas naman yung time constant natin ay pabagal ng pabagal yung rate of decay noong current natin. Okay, so ito yung pinakamababang time constant and then habang bumabagal ay pataas ng pataas din yung time constant para walang din sa kapasitor. Okay, now pwede rin natin i-derive yung power dissipated doon sa resistor. So we have P of T for the resistor is equal to Vr times I or I squared R. Yung I natin dito ay yung response natin na I not E raised to negative T over tau and then squared natin times R. So we have I not squared E raised to negative 2T over tau times R. So ito yung power dissipated doon sa resistor. Now, Pwede rin nating mahanap yung energy doon sa resistor. So, energy doon sa resistor as a function of time is equal sa integral ng power doon sa resistor dt from 0 to t. So, substitute natin yung na-derive nating power na i not squared e raised to negative 2t over tau times r. So, we have i not squared r e raised to negative 2t over tau dt. So, therefore, we have Negative 1 over 2 tau I not squared R e raised to negative 2t over tau evaluated from 0 to t. So, we have energy dissipated sa resistor WR of t is equal to negative 1 half tau I not 0 R times 1 minus e raised to negative 2t tau. Okay, so at t is approaching positive infinity or patas ng patas yung time, itong factor na to na i to negative 2t over tau ay nag approach din yan ng 0. So, so therefore, yung remaining expression natin for the energy dissipated sa resistor ay magiging 1 half tau i not squared r or kung papalitan natin itong time constant tau ng L over R, so we have L over R i not squared r, makakancel si r, matitira ay 1 half L I not squared. Okay? Which is, kung tutuusin dito sa initial condition natin, we know na yung formula natin for the energy sa inductor ay 1 half L I squared, right? Basta din sa video ka about inductors. But sabi natin, yung initially, yung I natin ay I not. So, parang 1 half L I not squared din. So, therefore, ibig sabihin, law of conservation of energy yung nasunod. So, yung initial energy nung, kapas nung inductor na 1 half L I not squared, after some time, we're in yung T, uh, increases infinitely, matatransfer yung energy na yon doon sa resistor kaya ang equivalent din niyang energy ay yung 1 half Li not square as T approaches positive infinity. Okay? So na para ma-illustrate natin yung iba't ibang formula at para mag-analyze tayo source free RL circuit ay mag-solve tayo ng examples. Now, tulad dun sa kapasitor, meron din tayong key to working with the source free RL circuit which is almost the same lang. So, the first one, finding initial current I of 0 is equal to I not through the inductor. So, minsan, given yung I not natin at minsan hindi, so kung hindi, ay hahanapin natin yun by analyzing the circuit first. And then, the second one, the time constant tau of the circuit. So, ganun din kung meron tayong equivalent, kung meron tayong given RL circuit, which is yung equivalent resistance natin ay hindi single resistor, pwede natin hanapin yung Thevenin resistance across doon sa inductor. Okay, then apply natin yung na-derive nating formula na I of T is equal to I not e raised to negative T over tau. Okay, so para ma-illustrate itong 
key steps natin sa pagsasolve or pag-analyze ng source VRL circuit ay mag-solve tayo ng examples. For the first example, we have the switch in the circuit a figure below has been closed for a long time. At t equals 0, the switch is opened. Calculate I of t for t is greater than 0. Okay, so consider muna natin yung time at less than 0. Bago yung t is equal to 0, kung saan inopen natin bigla yung switch. So at t is less than 0, naka-close daw yung switch. So therefore, since mayroon tayong DC supply, under DC, yung inductor natin ay short. Basa dun sa video ko about inductors, right? So equivalently, magiging circuit natin dito ay 40 volts, 2 ohms, 12 ohms, 4 ohms, 16 ohms, and then shorted itong C inductor. Kasi nga, under DC, in a steady state condition, short C inductor. So, therefore, itong circuit natin ay pwede pa nating ma-reduce as simply ito na yung C inductor. Parang yung 16, parang mababypass na lang kasi nakaparallel yung isang short wire. So, we have 2 ohms, 12 ohms, and 4 ohms. So, kailangan nating mahanap dito yung current doon sa inductor kasi gagamitin natin ito once na ma-open yung switch which is at time t is equal to 0. Kasi nga, kung ano man yung maging current at time t is less than 0 nung inductor, therefore, at time t equals to 0, yun pa rin yung magiging initial current doon sa inductor kasi nga, the current in the inductor cannot change instantaneously. Base dun sa video ko about inductors din. Okay, so, paano ba natin mahanap yung IL dito? So, consider natin itong parallel na 4 tsaka 12 ohms. So, simplify natin. So, for parallel resistor, yung formula niyan ay 4 times 12 over 12 plus 4 or simply 3 ohms, right? So, pwede natin i-rewrite ito as 2 ohm and 3 ohm. So, equivalent ito ng Yung 3 ohm na to ay equivalent ng parallel 4 ohm tsaka 12 ohm ha? 40 volts source. Now, pwede natin makuha yung total current using ohms law. So, IT is equal to 40 volts over yung sum ng resistance o yung RT, 2 plus 3. So, we have 40 over 2 plus 3 is simply 8 amps. Ngayon, ito yung dadaloy dito sa buong circuit, dito sa parallel combination na 3 ohms. So, therefore, pag binalik natin ngayon itong resistor into their form na parallel, gusto natin hanapin lang itong current dito sa 4 ohm kasi yun yung dadaloy dun sa uh, inductor, right? So, using division, current division formula, we have IL is equal to kung ano yung hindi natin kinoconsider na resistance, yun yung numerator over yung sum nung dalawang resistance. For, for two parallel resistors formula to, base dun sa video ko about current division theorem. So, we have 4 plus 12. And then, yung total current I na nakuha natin, which is 8 amps. So, therefore, yung IL natin ay 12 over 4 plus 12 times 8 or simply 6 amps. Ito yung time T is less than 0 pa. Now, sabi ko nga, at time is equal to 0, yung IL natin equal pa rin doon sa 6 amps kasi hindi siya magbabago. So, therefore, meron tayong I of 0 or I not, which is equal to 6 amps. Next, pag inopen na natin tong switch, parang mawawala na tong independent voltage source natin. So, magiging source-free RL circuit na tayo. Ito yung matitira, right? So, we have 4 ohm, 12 ohm, and 16 ohm. 12 ohm and 16 ohm. And then, yung inductor natin. Okay? Yung inductor natin ay 2 Henry. So, ito yung current sa inductor. Now, hanapin natin yung equivalent resistance, Thevenin resistance, para yung gagamitin natin sa time constant RL. So, hanapin natin yung RTH across this 2 Henry inductor. So, parang series tapos parallel. So, parang Rx is equal to 4 plus 12 is 16. So, 16 parallel to 16, parang 16 over 2 or simply 
8 ohms na lang yung RX natin. So therefore, masasolve na natin yung time constant na tau, which is equal sa L over RX. So yung L natin ay 2 Henry over yung RX natin na 8 ohms. So 2 over 8 or simply 1 fourth seconds. Okay, so therefore, pwede na natin mahanap yung current response kasi meron na tayong time constant tsaka yung initial current na I naught. So, we have I of t is equal to I naught e raised to negative t over tau, right? So, we have yung I naught natin ay nakuha natin na 6 amps times e raised to negative t over yung tau natin na 1 fourth. So, simply we have I of t is equal to 6 e raised to negative 4 t amps. Okay, so therefore, this is the current response. Okay? Okay, so ganun lang mag-analyze ng source-free RL circuit. So, para lang din siyang source-free RC circuit. So, dapat hanapin muna natin yung initial current dun sa inductor, I not, as well as yung equivalent time constant first by finding the Thevenin resistance or equivalent resistance across doon sa inductor and then yung equivalent inductance din nung inductor. And then, after natin mahanap yung time constant or tau, pwede natin i-apply yung current response natin na I of t is equal to I not e raised to negative t over tau. Okay, so that's it for this video. So, sana ay may natutunan kayo sa video na to at maraming salamat sa panunood.